Hello and welcome to the Thursday, October 31st, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, we finally got some details about the security content of this week's Apple updates. So we had updates for iOS, watchOS, tvOS, but also for macOS Catalina and for Safari, as well as for iCloud for Windows and iTunes for Windows. Let's start with macOS. A number of privilege escalation vulnerabilities are being addressed here as usual. There is a very little detail from Apple, of course, here to go by. A couple vulnerabilities that sort of stuck out as being somewhat interesting. For example, the first one, a vulnerability in accounts that allows a remote attacker to leak memory, which is kind of odd as a vulnerability in this particular subsystem. A number of code execution vulnerabilities in, for example, audio players, so parsing malicious audio file would trigger this. Also interesting, a malicious application may be able to gain root privileges via man pages. So not sure if the user would have to install it and then by installing the man pages, this would be triggered or by reviewing an arbitrary man page, this particular exploit would be triggered. Again, very little detail here on what the actual exploit mechanism is. Now, the vulnerabilities being addressed in the iOS and iPad OS updates are pretty much a copy of what we have for Mac OS, but there are also, I think it's 11 different vulnerabilities that are fixed in WebKit. Of course, these vulnerabilities are addressed via the separate Safari update for Mac OS. As far as iTunes and iCloud for Windows go, the bulk of the vulnerabilities being addressed are again WebKit issues. There is one vulnerability that's common to all these uh, Windows patches that Apple released and that's a graphics driver vulnerability that may lead to arbitrary code execution with system privileges. It's not clear if this could be triggered by, for example, just viewing a malicious file in iTunes, but it also does hit iCloud, so not just iTunes, which of course does play videos. Overall, no real huge vulnerabilities, really sort of just a lot of standard stuff that we had before. I'm sort of missing anything Wi-Fi Bluetooth related. Usually there were a couple of vulnerabilities like that that were addressed in prior updates. And then we have yet again another deserialization vulnerability. This time it's in the untitled Goose game. And I was uh, first hesitating a little bit to cover it here, but I think there are a couple of reasons why it, this is an interesting vulnerability, even though it's really in itself not all that severe. In order to exploit it, you have to trick the victim into loading a malicious save file into the game. Usually when you end the game, you have the option to save the state of the game and these files essentially uh, you have to replace here. The reason that I think this is really interesting is that first of all, it's not a web application vulnerability and we often do associate deserialization vulnerabilities with web applications, but they of course happen very often. Secondly, uh, the reason for the vulnerability here is how the .NET binary formatter is used to read and deserialize these safe game files. This is a fairly common way how deserialization is done in software written in .NET. So uh, very likely that others made the same mistake and did not use a serialization binder to actually prevent uh, these type of attacks. An exploit is available for this. So I actually see this really as a good sort of learning opportunity if you are coding in .NET and really would like to see sort of how some of uh, these deserialization vulnerabilities work and how to prevent them. 
And good old radio pagers have pretty much disappeared, but there is one industry where they're still in use quite widely, and that's in the medical field, in hospitals, and apparently also in emergency medicine, in ambulances and the like. A study in England showed how, in particular in large cities like London, it's very easy to still pick up pager signals with uh, medical information in them. Of course, pagers based on their age, no encryption in them. The data is all sent in the clear, which is why you probably should just get rid of them and replace them with cell phone based systems, LTE systems. Yes, there are some weaknesses in those systems as well, but they're a lot better than these old pagers. And we got a vulnerability in Kibana. Uh, this is actually a prototype pollution remote code execution vulnerability in order to exploit is this an attacker has to have access to the timeline feature in Kibana. Reason I mention this is Kibana is very popular among security people for log review and the like. It's part of the ELK stack. So certainly something to be aware of, but these systems are typically not exposed to the public, which does limit the exposure somewhat here. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.